Oh, we're supposed to be live today. Hmm. Who knew? Oh, wait a minute. Facebook Live says you're live and we're building an audience for you. Rah. I guess this would be a great time to just sit here and be like, hmm, 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 hmm. Could play music. Oh, by the way, I am. Hopefully, this is sounding good again using the iPhone 7 Plus. Hey, Sir Robert Schultz of Schlossstrasse of Berlin. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> good evening, Bob. Bob's here. <laughs> yes, I hope you can hear me, sir. Gosh, you're a dude. I'm so, I, okay, I didn't expect you to be in on this, my man. Cool, all right. Because I know it's late. I feel like we should have some background music or something. Hmm, I know. Let's put on above and beyond 200. Yes. I, I know, it's 1 a.m., dude. You're crazy. You're totally crazy doing this right now. Seriously. See, now I'm following uh, the instructions from uh, Facebook Live. They said to take some time to build an audience while you're waiting for everything to be built. So I'm taking some time to build an audience. <laughs> Dude, I'm so fried from all that editing from Dawn and Todd's I Do Barbecue. Seriously, I'm just like, that. That's that's how my brain feels right now, Bob. Seriously, my brain right now is like this. It's like, And there really isn't much more. Let me center this a little bit better for you guys. No, I'm not anal retentive. Uh-oh. Omar's in the house. Oh, crap. I better straighten up and fly right and be cool. Twinkle, twinkle, be cool, yo. Look. Bob. I'm going to open this without shaking it. <laughs> Hola! Or should I say holla? What's up, Omar? Dude. Glad to have you on, seriously. Kind of bear with me here. It's been a really crazy day. Like, I'm pretty excited. Um, I can't show you guys right now, but the the iPhone, look at how bright this is. It's like, oh, it takes a moment for that to auto to correct. But I'm using the I <laughs> Bob, I thought you'd like that. <laughs> I'm gonna open it without shaking it. You scare the crap out of me when you do that, dude. Seriously. It's like, ah. no, man, seriously, Omar, I'm glad you're here. So today, I'm really excited. Uh, just about a week ago, uh, Beast Grip made an announcement and they added another piece of equipment for their Beast Grip um, mounts for uh, iPhones and Androids, Nokias, Microsofts, you name it. It's, it's a pretty amazing piece of equipment. I use it all the time. And... They just announced, basically, the best way to describe it, those U-shaped handles. Super stoked that that came out, and it's out really, really cheap, and I would show it to you guys. But the iPhone is mounted in the, the Lumi light case. I don't know if you can see it. You see the two bars going across the sunglasses right now. But that's, it's mounted in that. And then I've got the shoulder pod to hold that, and then the Gorilla pod, and I need to just, like, I don't know, like four or five inches of extra lift. And so I put everything on the box so I could just have the perfect lift. I know. Oh, and um, the windows are open. We're airing out EPHQ right now. So all the windows are open. So if, if we get a little bit of street noise, I just want to say, oops. It just kind of, it's but it's gorgeous out. It was like 75 degrees here, as opposed to like in about a week, it's going to be 30 like below freezing. Well, 30 Fahrenheit. So I want to make sure I clarify that, that it's not Celsius, it's 30 Fahrenheit, because if it was 30 Celsius, it'd be miserably like hot. It would be terrible. So, excuse me while I take a drink here. I've been talking a lot today. Mm. And my voice is still fried from the fair on Saturday. Go figure. 
and it was just totally fried. So as I shared with you guys earlier this afternoon or this morning, like I said, today is a blur, but the inspiration for today's topic is from Sir Robert Schultz of Schlossstrasse of Berlin. And I used it in the title as well for today's live episode. Basically, dude, it's backups. It's, I can't stress it enough. Bob has seen EPHQ and he's not seen like the, all of it. He's only seen like to my, my right this way. There's easily probably about almost, almost three dozen terabytes of hard drives. And that's not including the ones that are in front of me, which would be behind the cam, like over the camera here. There's another mm, one, two, three, four, five. I've got another, jeez. No wonder my computers are kind of slow sometimes. I've got another, another 20 terabytes of hard drives behind the camera. You can't see it right now, but it's, it's on the other side of the camera here. Those are the ones that are typically live. And what I mean by live, they're always on, always ready to go. And in today's world, making backups is so much more imperative as opposed to back in the day when it was film, when it was film, slides, all of that. I've got an entire like borderline walk-in closet of crates of boxes filled with slides and negatives. It's insane the amount of footage that I shot back when I was doing what would be referred to as analog um, photography. And what's nice about that is that it's an instant backup and it's a backup that is retrievable unless the actual slide or negative gets destroyed. It is retrievable forever. The technology for slides and negatives, it may become in a way obsolete. Hi, Vicky. Hello. I mean, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. <laughs> if you uh, guys are uh, seeing her name turn up in the thread here, Victoria is the awesome recipient of the world's first wedding filmed and photographed entirely simultaneously on one iPhone. One. It's amazing what we were able to do on her wedding day. Uh, it's, it was an honor to be able to do that. It took a lot of time. Hello. Right back at you. Right back at you, Vicky. Anyways, so back to what I was sharing with you guys. It's, it's truly amazing what we can still do with film, with slides, with negatives. It can still be used. You could take a slide or a negative and just go and scratch it. <laughs> you're, you're too kind, Vicky. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice note about your wedding photography. There's so much. I, I mean, you've got to have probably have hours and hours and hours of time to go through all your wedding photos because there was a there was a massive folder of just amazing memories that we caught all day. So as I was mentioning, you could take a slide or a negative and you can just go and you could scratch it. You could literally scratch it. And what's awesome is that you can still use it. But if you were to take your hard drive or a CD or a DVD, if you're still using spinning media and drop the hard drive or scratch your CD or your DVD or even a thumb drive, whatever it might be, you're pretty much, you're screwed. The chances of you being able to retain, to not retain, excuse me, to, to get to that particular data is borderline zero to maybe 10%. And that's just, you know, a CD, a DVD, or a hard drive, or a thumb drive. That's not including SD cards, micro SD cards, compact flash cards, all of that, which are extraordinarily fragile. Do not let the manufacturers fool you. They may say they've got the fastest, 1 million speed, 300 million terabyte, blah, 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 faster than the Ducati motorcycle, compact flash card, or SD card, and it's, you know, it's archivable for a thousand years. It'll outlast all of us. 
do not buy into that. Buy the fact that you're purchasing something from a reputable brand and there are different brands to buy from, but don't buy into that. Kathleen, hello! Oh, wow. I, oh, that's really, uh, why am I always wearing glasses? Because I am just so tired right now. Usually by the time I do this, I'm either in the middle of an intense day or I'm at the end of an intense day. And, you know, it's like, it's kind of like the Corey Hart song from the 80s. You know, it's like, I wear my sunglasses at night and in the daytime too. And then there's the other song, my future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. <laughs> Plus, these are David Ford's. These are DF Collection. I, I absolutely love wearing these sunglasses. He, he's amazing. I, I'm honored to be able to wear these. We uh, used these and another pair when we were filming and photographing Johnny Z at Hi-Fi Hair and Records for the commercial for uh, DF Collections for David Ford. And then it's they're awesome. And because I have a, an, a really big brain, that's what an optometrist told me one time. He says, I have a really big brain, so it was really difficult. <laughs> True story, I'm not kidding. An optometrist flat out went, you know, we're having a tough time fitting you for some glasses here and some sunglasses. Um, your head's just really big. I mean, I mean, uh, 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 you have a really big brain. <laughs> it was hilarious how it happened. So yes, and yes, Vicky, totally. I love wearing the sunglasses. Yeah, the Beatles, Ringo, seriously, I mean, and then there's that one movie with the band, The O'Neaters. Movie reference, if you guys know the movie, you know what I'm talking about. The O'Neaters, the drummer always wore the sunglasses. So that's the name of the band. Okay, so. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Thank you very much, Vicky. So. Or is it just to speak to us better? Oh, you're too kind, Kathleen. Thank you very much for the nice note. I'm very fortunate to have really cool pair of sunglasses I get to wear. It's either these or just off to my right. I've got my Wayfarer 2s. I love my Wayfarers, but they're kind of dingy today. Oh, if you guys didn't see it, I know we'll get off the topic here. Well, I'll show you in another video. I'll show you in another video, but I got a new hat. This is my Kangle and I have another hat, but I got a hat at the fair, so I'll share that with you guys later. Yes, you know the movie, Vicky. Yes, that thing you do. And who made the movie? Hmm? Who made the movie? Hmm. He just did another movie about an airplane crash. Hmm. You've got mail. Hmm. Okay. So, with backups. Now, I was talking to you guys a little bit about the backups that you can have automatically with with your film and with your with your slides it's it's yes tom hanks awesome actor and he just remember we just talked about this on facebook how he had uh, crashed some wedding photos i've heard he's such an amazing guy too now there is a movie that i highly highly encourage you guys to take a look at i think i purchased it a while ago i'm looking for it on my other iphone here oh gosh and if not then i Maybe I didn't purchase it and it's just on YouTube. I know it's it's an amazing movie. Uh, the greatest actor in the world did it. Uh, we all know who that is. That's Keanu Reeves, obviously. And Reeves documentary. Side by side, boom, there it is. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, so cool. It is still here. It was a trifecta mo uh, film and Let's see if it'll focus for a second there. Uh, nope, it's not picking it up. It's really bright. Wilson, yes! <laughs> Absolutely. What a great movie, too. Seriously. Uh, but, okay. So, Keanu Reeves, a few years ago, did a documentary, and it was titled Side by Side. And this particular movie, he wanted to address how the analog day and age of going from film and slides moved into the digital day and age of where we're at today. And in fact, here's, it's got a little bit of a synopsis here about what it is, about what the movie is about. It says, from Tribeca Film, Keanu Reeves takes an in-depth look at the future of digital cinema, featuring interviews with cinematic masters, James Cameron, 
David Fincher. That doesn't seem right. David Lynch. I don't remember David Fincher being in it. I have to look again. David Lynch, Martin Scorsese, Steven Soderbergh, and so many more. He Seriously, he sat down and talked with all of these greats from the industry and getting their opinion about how things have changed going from analog to digital. What are the pros? What are the cons? And the biggest con that continues to come up in digital photography and in digital filmmaking is archivability, backups. And we're not talking just, okay, we have to have a backup hard drive for our computer. We're talking redundancy, absolute catastrophic failure redundancy. And as professional photographers and filmmakers, the minute that you accept money from a client is the minute that you truly need to be able to invest in the best materials that you can afford. And what I mean by that is making sure that you invest in a camera that you know has excellent components in it, whether it be for photography or for filmmaking. You, and it doesn't matter if it's Nikon or Canon or whoever it is, Fuji, Sony, it doesn't matter. The, those days, everybody's just leapfrogging everybody, so those days really don't matter anymore. This seems so bright right now. You know what's really cool about this particular light is that I can do that and I can dim it a little bit. And I can bring it up there. That seems a little bit better. It just seems so hot just a moment ago. And you've got to make sure that you really do make that investment for your photography. You owe it to your clients and you owe it to your career and your name at the, that's why they come to you. <laughs> Kathleen, you're very kind or better photographer. Thank you very much, Vicki and Kathleen. That's, that's super sweet of you guys. But seriously, you've got to invest in the proper equipment that will protect your clients. Sir Robert Schultz of Schlossstrasse of Berlin. Gut, gute Nacht. And I'll chat with you tomorrow, dude. Chat with you tomorrow. Get some rest and be safe in the amazing city of Berlin. Love that city. Berlin's amazing. And so Sir Robert Schultz of Schlossstrasse of Berlin. Long story. It's a crazy long story about his name and his title, of course. So you guys, if you're gonna be filming and you're gonna be doing any photography for your clients, you've gotta make sure you make the proper investment in the gear. Now granted, yes, it is all about the photographer behind the gear. Yes, that does make a difference, but the photographer does not have any impact in terms of the, the reliability factor. Unless of course you beat the crap out of your equipment, then you're pretty much toast. So you've gotta make sure you make the proper investment in gear because electronic equipment does short out. I'm going to tell you that not just from knowing other people that have had it happen. I'm going to tell you that from experience. It's not like in the olden days where you just pop a battery in your camera, you throw your film in and, or, and you're ready to rock and roll and you really don't have that many liabilities with that. In today's day and age, one slight static discharge in your camera will fry, will fry your compact flash card, your SD card, micro SD card, it does not matter. It will destroy everything that you had on there. I am telling you this from experience, catastrophic failure. I had made a huge investment in SanDisk long, long time ago and all my stuff was SanDisk. And for some reason they had a really bad season of cards because not only did I have issues, but I knew several other people that had issues with these particular cards. Now granted they've come a long way since then, but at that time it was a huge liability and it, it created a speed bump. I had a lot of things that I needed to deal with during that particular incident. It can happen to anybody. Nothing is infallible. Nothing is perfect, especially in today's day and age. Now, I want to continue talking about that because this is a very, very serious topic. I, I, I can't stress enough about this to you guys. So, continuing with the SD cards and compact flash cards, things like that, what you also need to keep in mind, how you're taking those things in and out, you know, how you're taking them out of your camera, how you're putting them back in. It is highly recommended you don't take them out. But the problem is, is that it's a catch-22. Are you gonna use a 128 gigabyte card and put all your eggs in one basket? And if you have catastrophic failure, you lose everything? I don't know, it's, it's a tough choice. It is a flat out tough choice for you guys to make. And everybody has to make that on their own. I can't tell you what's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. I can tell you what works for me. And for me, 
I have no batteries in my camera whatsoever when I'm putting my compact flash card in. Now, typically what I'll use will be a compact flash card adapter that I can put my SD cards in. I've been really happy with it. I believe it's a Delkin um, compact flash card adapter. And I just put my SD card in that, pop it in the camera. No batteries are in my camera when that happens. And I also use smaller sized cards. I'll use anywhere between four and 16 gigabyte cards. I do not like to go over 16 gigabytes because again, catastrophic failure sucks. It really sucks. And to have to deal with that with your client blows. And then just, there's every imaginable negative emotion with a catastrophic failure for your photography or your film. Imagine all of that and happening all at the same time, like just boom, everything is gone. It is horrible, horrible, horrible. So for me, that's what works for me. Now, if I do run out of space on my card while I'm shooting or while I'm filming, stop everything, put a lens cap on the front. I don't want any light coming into the lens. If I've got the time, boom, that's on there. I also turn the camera off, give it the proper time to go ahead and do its sensor cleaning let it power down. Then when it's done powering down, I then pop open the hand grip, pull my batteries. I want no electricity whatsoever to be in there. Do you pictures besides weddings, like worldwide dealings? Absolutely, Kathleen, absolutely. Yeah, with all the years that I've been in the business, absolutely. I've, have camera and two bags will travel. One camera, or excuse me, yeah, one bag for my camera equipment, one bag for my clothes. Depends on the on the uh, opportunity. Sometimes I only need one bag. Um, Reverend Saunders traveled with me and I only had one bag. I just brought my uh, Oakley backpack and I had plenty of gear in there and sufficient amount of clothes. It's, all, it's perfect. So, as I was mentioning, I'll take the batteries, I'll eject the batteries right out of the camera. I give it a moment to let all energy in the particular camera discharge. I want no reason whatsoever for there to be a problem. Also, while I'm doing this, I also avoid any like computers, electrical equipment, PA systems, speakers, subwoofers, wireless systems, anything like that. I'm just like, I treat it like the plague because all of that emits a lot of charge. And we all know subwoofers, I mean, we're talking big old boom, huge pieces of equipment. Those are magnets. What does a magnet do to a hard drive? What will a magnet do to your SD card or your compact flash card? Well, that would just suck. Really, really suck. So why risk it? I step away from all of that. At that point in time, then I will go ahead and I will remove the card and then typically I'll have another card ready to go that's already in the adapter. Pop that in, close it, put the batteries back in, seal it, fire the camera up, and then move along and just keep on going with the business. Also, I do not like to set the camera down. There have been instances where other professional photographers will set their camera down, and for whatever reason, there could be any type of an electrical discharge, and poof, goodbye, all your photos, all your film, poof totally, totally gone. So as I was mentioning, it's a tough line to choose in terms of, do you want a big card and you can just leave the card in the camera, plug your cable in when you get in and then download and extract everything right out of the camera right there without removing the card? Or do you play with smaller baskets and have fewer amount of eggs in those baskets and do everything you can to ensure that you have taken the proper steps? to make sure that what you are doing is protecting the best interest for your client that has paid you, your reputation, your name. And then from there, it's just a trickle down effect because then it follows into the fact that like everybody else has to inadvertently and not and indirectly, not inadvertently, indirectly suffer from the screw up that you did because then again, it brings down the quality of the industry. It really, really, really just it impacts everybody hence let's not be a mctographer seriously we are all here to help each other and if we can help each other make, make the industry better and boom 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 instead of constantly every time you turn on the computer you get on social media you see somebody else that was just 
really disrespecting themselves, the client, the industry, or whatever it is, or just doesn't care, or just doesn't have the knowledge. And if they don't have the knowledge, then they really should get the chops down before they, you know, chart, you know, charge before they really start doing stuff like that. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. That's that's really that's really sweet of you. Thank you so much for that note. So. You've got now here, you've started at the beginning of your shoot and you're taking all the necessary steps to ensure the protection of your images. Again, you're shooting in a digital realm. You're not shooting film. There are so many more elements that can just go nuts. That can totally, totally, totally just blow up in your face. And that is so key that you take all the necessary steps to protect yourself. And if you, are charging and you may want to think about making sure you have catastrophic failure like that particular article in your contract and i know everybody that is ever watching or listening to me talk about this has a contract not a handshake and a smile black and white paper it is so key it is so so totally key that you get that piece of paper signed or if you're doing contracts on your phone your ipad whatever it might be then fine, that's cool too. But you do a contract and you have that particular bit in there because it will be so key. Thanks, Marie. Absolutely, if you can do that, or you know how there's like the Faraday bags for your cell phones and cages and stuff like that to protect against, ooh, you know, tinfoil hat wearing people. Definitely, if you can do that, also windy days. Oh my gosh, there are definite bags. Um, I'm, I'm responding to Omar, by the way. Omar put a note on here about uh, taking part uh, photographs in a park city with fall leaves, the wind, the static electricity. Yes, that can impact it. You also have to deal with the fact that there's elements and particulates in the air. You get one of those on your card and you stick it in there, that can also cause an interruption right there as well. That would just really suck. But yeah, dude, and then also. Anybody that's a that shoots with DSLRs knows that God's cruelest, cruelest prank. It's like I know I'm getting ready to get a, I'll probably get like struck down one of these days. Seriously, but it's 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 like so funny to me that every time that I go to change a lens or open the camera up, it's just like whew, you get this massive burst of wind. It's like really, really. It's like it's it's. I always look at it like God saying, "Okay, how are you gonna deal with this, buddy?" Hmm? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm throwing you some wind. Here's a challenge. Um, so yeah, it is. It's totally crazy the stuff that we have to deal with. And again, that's different compared to film. Sometimes. Oh, thank you very, very much for that note, Vicky. That's really cool. I mean, Victoria. <laughs> So we've got, you've got the camera, you've got all of that. You've done everything that you can on the front end to protect your, your client's best interest and to protect yourself. Now you're back home, you're pulling everything down. You have a process that's in place on how you're gonna extract your photos and your film from the rigs that you're using, or you've got all the cards set to the side, whatever it is. First and foremost, before you do anything, you back it up. You totally back it up. There's a lot of different things and different ways that you can back up your equipment. I use, well, now I'm no longer using the, the computer. I no longer take my MacBook Pro with me. I'm actually using a Western Digital MyCloud that has an actual SD slot in it. And there's an app and I can use that. And then I also use the iPad Pro and just boom, plug the SD card into that. I've got two instant backups immediately and that's before i even go to the hard drives so it's like while i'm in route i'm putting it on there but when i get home then i'm taking everything and extracting it onto the computer i've got three redundant um actually four gosh i gotta make sure i get enough fingers here on my hand four ways that i back everything up from the immediate time that i walk in the door so in root, I've got backups. I've got the raw files on the cards, a backup on the hard drive, backup on the iPad Pro. I land here at EPHQ, get the card reader, pop it into the computer. I've got a backup locally on the computer, a backup, excuse me, on one of the hard drives, a backup on another hard drive, and then I also put it in my Dropbox. Just, God forbid, my place burns to the ground or I get robbed or something absolutely terrible. I want to make sure I've got a remote backup, 
okay? Now we're just talking about cameras right now. How many of you guys are out there shooting with a cell phone, whether it be Android, iPhone, Nokia? I got Nokia's back here behind me. It, it doesn't matter. You guys are shooting with a cell phone. How many of you guys are backing your stuff up? Do you have a live backup to your iCloud or to the backup via um, Google Drive? The Google. Do you have um, the, the new like micro SD card adapters? that you're able to stick into your phones and back them up? Are you doing backups when you're out there shooting or doing something fun or on vacation? These are serious things to consider. It is good. Omar, dude, I'm so glad you do. I, I've got in my pocket, like in my, like everybody has like an everyday carry bag for catastrophe and stuff like that. I have an everyday bag for photography, <laughs> filmmaking, everything from microphones to lights, you name it, and then backups. Awesome. Kathleen, awesome. I, I really like your comment here. Very, very cool. Uh, Kathleen wrote on here, next time you're live, can you show us the pics you have taken in the worldwide dealings? Actually. You could definitely take a look at EsquirePhotography.com and you're going to see some abs just terrifically gorgeous, beautiful weddings from Sharada and David's wedding, four days worth of a wedding in India to everybody else's, Christine and Christoph, their wedding in uh, just outside of Berlin, Germany. There's so much on online that you can definitely take a look at and enjoy. There's absolutely beautiful photography and that's not including a lot of the things that I haven't dropped because there's stuff that I've done in London, Berlin, Trier, Germany, Paris. There's so much that I haven't shared yet. It's, you know, personal stuff comes last. And it's just the way it goes. So you guys need to make sure that you back everything up on your phones. And if you can, dad and Kirby have back for your photos and lots. Dude, Vicky, seriously, Vicky just said uh, that her dad encouraged her to have a backup for her photos. Her laptop has crashed in the past. Uh, Vicky, if you want, shoot me a text message or an email and I can help you as well, like with your dad. We can both give you some ideas on like what types of hard drives to use, how you can get things set up, how you can have just an automatic backup. There's a lot of ways that you can do that and there's some fantastic software that you can use that just really automates the process. And it's crazy because Speaking of automation, for me personally, I've, I unfortunately, <laughs> I have the craziest story from New Year's Eve from several years ago when I was in uh, Paris with my good friend and amazing Spaniard photographer, uh, Danny Mendoza. We were in Paris and New Year's Eve, I was supposed to go hang out with Chelsea and her friends who, Chelsea and Molly, I just did their wedding over in Milwaukee a few months ago. And we're supposed to all go hang out. And that morning, I was at the metro station on New Year's Day at like 6 in the morning or something like that. And a big guy, well, I was skinnier then, but still, just, you know, broad shoulders, kind of a big guy. When I was at the metro station, sadly, I got mugged. And it was when the iCloud service was starting to come out, but it wasn't totally effective. It wasn't completely working. And so... Everything that was on my iPhone, because that is the one thing that they took from me and stole from me, everything that day up and that had not been backed up, there was like a day and a half worth of photos just gone. Fortunately, nothing else happened to me. They didn't get the 30 grand in Leica equipment that was under my leather jacket zipped up. They just thumped me on the back of my head, grabbed my phone and boom, gone. And apparently that's a thing. Like stealing iPhones is a big thing, I guess, in Europe. And it could have happened to anybody. but. I've been the victim of having lost my photography from just a random experience like that. And it sucks. It hurts. It's crap. I absolutely, absolutely hate how that feels, but you just, you roll with it. You just, just roll with it. And fortunately now we have a lot of redundant backups. Let's see. Omar. Dude, seriously. Go pick up your little Scooby snack, and obviously I'll have this posted later tonight, so you can watch, you know, the rerun. You can pick up from where it left off. But yeah, definitely go, you know, family first. This is just me, a dude with a camera, sharing some experience with you guys. But Omar, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. So back to your mobile phones. The backups are key. How can you do backups? And today, in today's day and age, well, Dropbox seems to be like the go-to. It's like McDonald's for backups. It's everywhere. 
But what's nice is that you can do that. You've got your iCloud, Google, everything. You can do so much to protect your photography and your memories and your films on your mobile phone. And it's automated. It's so totally simple. And not only that, but then there's others. There's for iPhone, there's I think a program called Ice Cream that you can use. Yeah, Vicky, Dropbox. I use it all the time. It's just convenient. Everybody has it. It's super easy to use. It's just copy and paste. You know, or I have it set up automatically. So I plug in my phone and it just boom lights up and everything starts to back up. Or if I'm in a Wi-Fi environment, I can have it updating as well. Or if I want, you can actually turn it on. And depending on your data plan. Yeah, Omar. Yeah, due to the camera. No kidding. I thought about that. I, I have. I've only I've only done the mictographer one, so I have to think about the, the dude with the camera. But you guys, I highly encourage you to have automated systems in place to do backups for your mobile devices. That's the one camera that's the most popular camera in the world today. It's proven. There's no reason in the world. <gasps> Crystal. Christine Dye has joined the conversation. Cool. <laughs> so, seriously, your mobile phone, everybody shoots with a mobile phone. And I'm using that term the way it's intended to be used. Everybody shoots with a mobile phone. My mobile phone is my go-to camera, and I've left my high-end like equipment in the hotel rooms when I've traveled because I'll just use my Nokias because it's convenient. And also, when I'm shooting, Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times I've been kicked out of a place because I had my professional equipment, but then I bust out any of my you know, high-end Nokias or now the iPhone's gotten a lot better. And I can use that and still come out with pretty darn close work. I mean, yeah, DSLR, mobile phones, it's not the same, it's apples and oranges. But the reality is, the majority of people now are just appreciating their memories digitally online, on their phone, on their iPad, their whatever that they're using, it doesn't matter, their computer, they're not printing, hardly anybody prints anymore. I've scrapped doing albums, I've got some albums that I can do from different vendors, but no need, no need at all. But I do have to protect my digital photography and my digital films all the time. So you guys, I can't implore enough upon you to really take what you're doing seriously if you think just having one hard drive for your computer is enough, it isn't. If you've got a hard drive for your computer, then get a cloud service. There's a whole bunch of cloud services and they're reasonable. And cloud services are dirt cheap now. I mean, dirt cheap. I think a terabyte with Google is like, what, a buck 99? Seriously? Amazon? Okay, now granted, Amazon just scrapped their whole like unlimited photo program where it was like 12 bucks or something like that. But so what? There's a ton of other things that are out there that are just as easy to protect all of your memories. And that is absolutely the worst thing in the world to have happen to you as just an individual, as a professional. And think about it this way. How, how important are your memories to you? Everybody, well, I don't say everybody, but the majority of people pretty much think that, oh, it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. But the reality is, there's a lot of people that have had their houses burned down, that have been in floods, that have been in tornadoes, that thought, oh, it'll never happen to me. And then you watch the news. Oh, wow, we're so sorry to see that, you know, the tornado came ripping through your, through your town. What, you know, how did everything happen for you? Well, we grabbed our family photos and our albums and we grabbed, and we grabbed the pets and the kids and we ran into the basement. That sounds like that's a pretty darn important thing that's on your list because Outside of children and pets, the next thing that is usually right in that same parallel plane are the family photos, the memories. I can also tell you from experience that I've had the honor of ha capturing the last photos, the last portraits for many loved ones at weddings and parties because they were just old. They, they you know, their time had come and Dude, how much would that suck? You, you capture the last portrait of somebody's grandmother or grandfather or great-grandmother or great-grandfather, but you have absolutely crap systems in place to protect that and everything gets lost. That would just blow. It really, really would. I, I don't ever want to feel that. I really don't. 
And, on, and also, if you're shooting and you're out in the field and you've done a wedding or a party or an event or who knows what, models, portfolio, whatever it is that you've done, do not, by all means, do not put it all in the trunk of your car. Come on. We've seen enough stories. It's so easy to break into cars now. And, I mean, you guys know the plates on my car. <laughs> it's free advertising. But seriously, the reality is, is that there's no way I'm parking my car on the street and going to the after party or I'm going to go hang out with some friends and leave everything in there. And, in fact, wasn't it earlier this year that a professional photographer had a momentary lapse of reason and left all of her gear in the trunk of her car in her driveway and inside of her gear were her compact flashcards and on those compact flashcards were multiple weddings multiple portrait shoots i think it was something like a dozen total events how do you make up for that how do you deal with that with your clients how do you explain that gosh uh, that would just suck. I mean, it, granted, it's, it was probably human error, or maybe it wasn't. Who knows? I mean, it happens. But be that conscientious. Really step up to the plate and be, just be the rock star that you can be. Be the person that everybody's talking about in a positive manner when it comes to backing up your photography and your films. Don't be the person that's like, yeah, that guy, what a jerk, you know, didn't back up the stuff and, you know, his house got broken into or his car, whatever it might be. And also, as I was mentioning about the media that you're shooting with and the equipment that you're shooting with, your hard drive selection is also key. For a long time, Western Digital sucked. <laughs> they were bad. Western Digital and I think the other companies pronounced Lasse or Lasse or something like that, whatever it is. They were terrible, absolutely terrible. Now they've, they've gotten better, but do your research before you make those purchases. Look at Best Buy. There's some great people that review the equipment on Best Buy. Look on Amazon. I tend to shy away from eBay for that because no, mm -mm, I just I know, need to know that I'm buying and I'm not buying gray market or black market for anything that I'm backing up. But seriously, look at all the reviews, compare them. My first go-to button when I'm purchasing any hard drives or any equipment is four stars or higher and click and that's what I want to look at. And I want to look at all the in-depth reviews. I don't want to look at what trolls are putting on there because there are trolls that are going to put crappy reviews and stuff like that. Yeah, eBay used stuff. Exactly. Vicky just mentioned eBay used stuff. No, no, especially with hard drives. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. It's, it's so not worth it. But, you know, make sure you get a good, reputable hard drive. I prefer to use Seagate. I've had fantastic experiences with them. They've got solid construction. I've been really, really happy with it, but other people have been really happy with Western Digital. My new Western Digital My Cloud, my, you know, that particular device is my mobile hard drive. Yeah, Amazon trustworthiness. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, Vicky. That's so key. I get sent stuff and emails all the time. I do reviews occasionally on Amazon and Best Buy, and it's neat to, that people do take the reviews pretty seriously. I get inquiries and emails, and it's, it's neat to have that taken seriously. Also, keep in mind, if you can, and you can swing it on the, out of your pocketbook, make sure that you buy the best that you can buy and then add 10%. It's like when you're gonna buy a car, a house, a camera, equipment, whatever it might be. Yeah, Best Buy has amazing deals. Exactly, yeah, uh, Kathleen, I totally agree with you. Best Buy's had fantastic um, merchandise for sale, and that, that's cool, you got your son a laptop there. I, I love the equipment that they have at Best Buy. They've really they're they're weathering the storm for retail brick and mortar. I'm really impressed. They take their customer service very seriously now. They really do, and they've done some amazing things. They had a, they expanded really big, and they went into Europe and England, but then they had to do a contraction when the market started to kind of go. But they've continued to just keep tilting against that windmill, and they're doing a great job. You can walk in almost any Best Buy and have incredible customer service, and they'll work with you and walk with you. And that's another thing. If you do go into the store, you guys, go in just with knowledge. Put on your phone or take a piece of paper and put some notes down of what your criteria is. What are you doing with your photography or your films? And let them know. And they, yeah, very professional. I totally agree. They always are. 
let the people at Best Buy know this is what I need to get. This is what I'm trying to do. And they'll, they'll show you different things. I've been in Best Buy stores up to two hours. And it's not like I'm wasting their time. They're helping me make the most educated decision to help protect my clients. Their, their memories is the best way to describe it. Also, something to keep in mind is that don't go backwards in the technology because the technology continues, continues to get better. I think right now it is something like technology is advancing it's doubling every 12 months i mean the the window is just shrinking so much faster so clearly i mean they're making 12 and 20 terabyte drives dude we can afford that we really can't don't put all of them on one but get two also if you can you know if you can swing it have double backups for all of your photography and your films and use different models so if you're buying one then get the next latest a you know, better model hard drive or have two different particular you know manufacturers you can have seagate and western digital you can have whatever it is that you feel comfortable with and you've had great response with or you've you know had excellent referrals that makes a big difference but definitely the redundancy is so key so best thing to do here at home your computer two hard drives and a cloud that is the best thing that you can do to protect your client's best interest their memories and then make sure you've got the best stuff that you can shoot with and you're just backing everything up and then for your mobile phones automate this get it automated and it'll it'll rock you it's there's no reason why you can't automate it and if you don't know you can always go online and you can go on iTunes Google Play Store whatever it is and you can find definitely amazing and affordable pieces of software and, and you think of it this way if you have to spend ten dollars on an app for your phone and you're going to be going on vacation and it can automate your backup for you how much value is put into that ten dollars yeah it sounds like ten dollars for an app but dude i've spent 50 bucks on apps you know 99 cents 2.99 whatever it is how important is it to you there's a there's a saying that we have when we ride motorcycles it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Think about it, you guys, all right? So, I've talked quite a bit. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I've been blabbing for almost an hour. <laughs> Thank you for staying online with me this long, you guys, and, and joining in and commenting. Wow, I, this year's flying by, I don't know where it's going. So, dun dun dun, with that said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you uh, have any questions that you want to kind of keep private or you want to discuss something or you're facing a situation, feel free to reach out to me anytime. You guys know I'm on Facebook. You can always text me directly to my mobile phone. And the number is everywhere and my email is everywhere. You can always direct tweet me. I do my best not to do anything professional on Facebook Messenger. I'm not a big fan of that for the simple fact that it's not always consistent. So I definitely prefer just contact me direct just go directly to the source which is me and you can hit my phone and it's oh ooh. oh by the way i almost knocked this over but if you guys ever get these the java monsters the salted caramel oh, oh, oh ice cold ooh, <laughs> uh, you guys can always can you know contact me anytime and that's about it thank you so much for joining in with me on this Mictographer Monday, and it's an honor to be able to talk to you guys and share some of my tips and tricks to help you guys save your time, your money, your sanity, and your clients, and your reputation, and your name, and helping elevate the industry. And, you know, like, there's that quote that I recently, too high in sugar? No, Kathleen, they're really not that bad. I mean, I'll nurse one, like, all day. But then, if you saw the other episode, then I talk about the caffeine water. <laughs> the caffeine water is really good and it's just water and caffeine it's like the people that vape cap you know the the caffeine but um you know really you know think about things that you're doing with your craft and like the quote that i love to share right now seriously don't wish it was easier wish you were better getting better it has so much more value and it has a much bigger return. Anybody. Ah, thank you so much for the quote there, Victoria. Appreciate that. Coffee, you know it. That's why my business cards say caffeinated photographer. 
Ah, Kathleen. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's it's one of the episodes down. Totally take a look at it. I think I actually showed. It might have been on the Wedding Tip Wednesday from either a, a week ago or just recently. Definitely take a look at it. I think it's like like Caffeine Joe or Joe Water or something like that. I'll have to find it. And um, it's it's good. It's really, it's just cold water and caffeine. It's like caffeine infused water. But seriously, guys, a rising tide lifts all ships. Let's help each other out. Let's keep bringing this industry up. And not only that, but let's help each other. You know, if you're not a photographer and you want to know how to take better photos, that's what this program is for. That's what we're here for. Let's help each other get better. Anybody can be a loser and anybody cannot apply themselves. There's no effort in that, but where's the fun in that? We should all strive for greatness, you know? Like Gene Hackman says in one of the greatest movies with the greatest actor in the world, Keanu Reeves shared, you know, or Gene, or excuse me, Gene Hackman and Keanu Reeves were in a great movie called The Replacement. The Replacement is an amazing football movie. And Keanu Reeves said, pain heals, Chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. Think about it. All right, you guys, that's it. This is David Esquire from EPHQ sharing the McTographer Monday photography tips. And until next week, I will see you soon. <laughs> I always feel like a Muppet when I do that. <laughs> Bye, guys. Yeah.